Thanks to the Most High God and begin to bless the King of Kings, bless the Lord of Lords, bless the Ancient of Days, give Him glory, give Him honor, give Him adoration, praise Him, praise Him, praise the Almighty God, give Him glory, give Him honor, give Him adoration. It's about to do something very special in your life today. So praise him, praise him, praise him. Give him all glory, give him all honor. Give him all adoration. It's about to do something very, very special in your life today. This is a very special day in your life, a day you will never, never forget. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we have worshipped. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. Amen. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you all, amen. We give you all the glory. We give you all, we give you all the glory. We give you all, Almighty God. King of kings and Lord of lords, the God of wonders, the one who can do what no man else can do, the one who can open and no man can shut, the one who can shut and nobody can open, the all-sufficient God, glory be to your holy name. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, today, in the lives of everyone listening to us right now, do something new. Do something powerful. Do something miraculous. Do something wonderful. Let everyone listening to us now have a testimony today. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let somebody shout hallelujah. Uh, why don't you shake hands with one or two people and say, Good evening, God bless you mightily. And then you may please be seated. If you have your Bible there, open it to Revelation chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. Revelation 4, 10 and 11. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying thou art worthy O Lord to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are 
and were created. There's somebody here today who is going to go home completely whole. I'm going to tell you the reason why in a moment. But we're going to have three days of special miracles and wonders. Beginning with right now. And we've called them the three days of special divine encounters. Now what is a divine encounter? A divine encounter simply means a collision between the Almighty and you. A collision between the one who made you for his pleasure and you. The best way to find divine encounter is God is coming one way you are coming in another way and you collide there is no way the almighty can collide with you and you will remain the same I will give you an illustration. The Bible tells us of something that happened. There was a widow in Luke chapter 7, from verse 11 to 15. Luke 7, 11 to 15. There was a widow who was going to bury her only son who had died. A crowd followed her. They were going to the burial ground. On the other side of the street, another crowd was coming. The Lord Jesus Christ had a crowd following him. In the middle of the street, the two crowds collided. And something special happened. As soon as they collided, the people who were carrying the dead body stopped. And Jesus Christ said to the woman, weep not. Oh, in the name that's above every other name. From now on, you will never weep again. Weep not. He said, he touched the coffin. He said to the young man in there, and said, hey boy, who told you you can die now? Get up. Stop causing your mother sorrow. Go back home. And the boy jumped up. And the people who had been weeping began to shout for joy. In the name that's above every other name, before this day is out, somebody is going to shout for joy. When the Almighty collided with even death, death has to surrender. When the one in whose presence there is a fullness of joy collides, with where there is fullness of sorrow, sorrow must yield. But now let's talk specifically about you. In Jeremiah 32 verse 27, Jeremiah 32 verse 27, God said, Behold, I am the God of all flesh. Jeremiah 32 verse 27. Behold, I am the God of all flesh. The Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? 
the one who made you says he's asking you a question he said is your case impossible for me <laughs> when the supernatural collides with the natural the natural must surrender As a story I will tell you before I go any further to let you fully understand. A man, an elderly man, was by the roadside because his car has stopped. The car was giving him trouble. The car won't start. And he was struggling with the car. And then suddenly a man was driving past in a limousine, beautiful car. And he looked and saw the old man and he stopped. Came out of his car, beautiful, mighty car. Went to this man by the roadside and said, what's the problem? He said, well, my car won't start. He said, I see. He said, go inside. Let me take a look. So the old man went to the driver's seat, and this man, the rich man, opened the bonnet, touched one or two things, and told the old man to start the car. Immediately the car started. Uh -huh. And the old man said, Sir, how did you do it? And in any case, why? How much do, you, do I owe you? The young man said, no, you don't owe me anything. My name is Ford. I'm the one who made this car. I did not make this car to stop by the roadside. I make this car to run. Today, the one who made you is going to meet you by the roadside. And he's going to say to you, I made you for my pleasure. Yeah. I made you to function. Yeah. Oh, very quickly, let's check one or two things. Have you any problem with your hands? The one who made you is going to come to you today and say, hey, wait a minute. I made your hands to clap. How do I know that? In Psalm 47, verse 1, Psalm 47, verse 1, he says, clap your hands, all ye people. Is why. Thank you very much. <laughs> that is why in Mark chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, Mark chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, the Bible says Jesus Christ came into the temple and he found a man with withered hands. He saw the hands, they were already withered, paralyzed, and he said, Oh, Hands, I made you to clap, not to be withered. And immediately, immediately, the hands became whole. You're going to speak to your hands right now. Speak by faith. I said, my hands, you are made to clap for joy. Hands, clap. That's why my maker made you. Amen. For the rest of your life, 
in the name that's above every other name, you'll be clapping for joy. In Psalm 149, verse 3, Psalm 149, verse 3, the Bible tells us God made your legs to dance. He said your legs are to praise him in the dance. Therefore, your legs has no reason to be crippled. Your legs has no reason to be sick. The God made your legs so you can dance. That is why in Acts of the Apostles chapter 3, verse 1 to 11, Acts of the Apostles chapter 3, from verse 1 to 11, when the Almighty God saw a man who was crippled from birth, through his servant, he spoke a word. Peter said to that man, Silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give unto you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Immediately, the legs straightened out, and the man began to walk and to leap and to praise God. Today, in the name that's above every other name, you are going to command your legs. Legs, you are to dance. You are not to be crippled. And so you will shout into the almighty God and say, from now on, I will dance. I will praise God. My leg will walk. My leg will jump. My legs will praise God. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. In Psalm 47 verse 1, Psalm 47 verse 1, the Bible tells us the reason why he made your mouth. It is to shout for God. In Psalm 89 verse 1, Psalm 89 verse 1, the Bible says, your mouth is made to sing of the mercies of the Lord. Your mouth is made to testify of his goodness. So tonight, you are going to speak to your mouth. Even those of you who are listening to me who are dumb, there is a breakthrough coming for you right now. Because in Mark chapter 7, from verse 32 to 37, Mark 7, 32 to 37, when they brought a dumb man to Jesus, he was dumb, he was deaf. They brought him to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, ah, ah, look at what the devil had done. I make this fellow to shout. I make this fellow to hear. And so he took him away from the people and said, I correct you. I made you for my pleasure. Now begin to function. And immediately he began to hear, he began to shout. From now on, those of you who are watching by sign, very soon you'll be shouting. Psalm 19, 19 verse 1, Psalm 19 verse 1 tells us the reason why he made your eyes. Your eyes are to see, not to be blind. And not to see uh, just a little bit at a time. No, no, no. He wants you to see clearly. That's why he made your eyes. Why? So that you can behold his glory. 
The Bible says in Psalm 19 verse 1, it said, The heavens declare the glories of God. The firmament show forth his handiwork. And how are you going to see these things unless you have eyes? So he made your eyes so that the eye could see. That's why in John chapter 9, from verse 1 to 7, John 9 from verse 1 to 7, when he saw a man who was born blind, he said, wait a minute. Hey, there seems to be a little mistake here. Hey, boy, come here. Take note, the blind man didn't even ask for help. It's the owner who said, no, 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 I didn't make you to be blind. I make you to see. I want you to see my glory. I decree right now, all of you who can see, from this moment onward, receive your sight. There's any sickness in any part of your body, leprosy, uh, whatever is, whatever other names, HIV, AIDS, anything in your body that should not be there. Ah, the one who may do is walking along the way. It's about it's about to collide with you. It's about to say to your body. Ah, what, 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 what happened here? Because according to Psalm 139 verse 14, Psalm 139 verse 14, he said, I may do fearfully and wonderfully well. You are my very special design. I design you so specially that my signature is on every hair on your head. According to Matthew chapter 10, verse 30. Matthew 10, verse 30. When he made you, he made sure. You know, when a great artist has finished some big painting, he will sign. The God said, I paid attention even to the hair on your head. When I made each one, I signed it. So you're going to tell your body now, anything that is on your body that should not be there, you are going to tell the body, hear the word of God. God made me fearfully. He made me wonderfully. Sickness, you can't stay in my body. You are not allowed at all. I am made for the pleasure of the almighty God. Body, hear the word of the Lord. No deformation allowed. That is why you find in Matthew chapter 8, Matthew chapter 8, from verse 1 to 4, there was this, this young man who, who was a leper. All the part of the body deformed. Fingers cut off. No three perforated. A part of the body filled with all manners of ugly sores. And that fellow came to him and said, Hey, uh, I know you are able to make me clean, but I'm not sure. He said, ah, 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 ah. Hey, What are you talking about? I want everybody to see you and know that you are wonderfully and fearfully made. He touched the leper. Immediately, the leper became clean. Everything that is hibernating in your body that should not be there, even as he said, every plant that my father has not planted in you is going tonight in Jesus' name. If you read Genesis chapter 1, from verse 26 to 29, somebody is about to get a major breakthrough right now. He said, let us make man in our own image, 
in our own likeness. And we'll talk more about that later on, probably on, on Wednesday. And then he, he now blessed, after he has made man, he now blessed them. But you go there, read verse 28. He blessed them. And after he blessed them, he now turned to them and gave a decree. Decree number one is be fruitful. His pleasure is that you be fruitful. If you're a woman and they are calling you barren, I want you to slap your belly now and tell your womb, womb, hear the word of the Lord. The pleasure of God is that I be fruitful. If you are not a woman and you are not barren and you have a relative who is barren, today you are going to get their fruitfulness going by faith you will say you will slap your stomach for that fellow on behalf of that fellow and say womb hear the word of the lord god made you to be fruitful be fruitful and so shall it be in jesus name and you know what every other thing in you your heart your liver your lungs your kidneys we are made by god for his pleasure to bless him david said bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name my heart bless his holy name my lungs bless his holy name my liver bless his holy name these things that were inside you were not made to be sick you are not allowed to have heart attack you are not allowed to have asthma. You are not allowed to have lack of blood. Everything inside you we are made to bless the name of the Lord. So you are going to speak with boldness and say everything that is in me from now on bless the Lord. You are not allowed to be sick. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to mention just one case in the Bible. You will find it in Mark chapter 5. From verse 25. To 34. Mark 5. From verse 25 to 34. It is the story you know. The story with the woman with the issue of blood. She was doing what God expected any woman to do to menstruate in preparation to becoming fruitful. Then the devil sneaked in and instead of the menstruation stopping it just kept on flowing she went to doctors they tried they failed she became physically bankrupt the bible says instead of getting better she got worse then one day she heard that Jesus was passing by and she made up her mind. I am going to have an encounter 
with my maker. Maybe you are just passing by and you've seen us gathered together in one little location and you saw what's going on here and you stop. Ah, oh, it is because we're about to have an encounter. But there was a crowd around Jesus Christ. He said, oh, <laughs> no crowd is going to stop me today. You know, the Bible says in Matthew 11, verse 12, Matthew 11, verse 12, he said, since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God sovereign violent, and the violent have taken it by force. She forced her way through the crowd and had an encounter with her maker. And her sickness came to an end immediately. Tonight, you are going to take your healing by force. Tonight, we are not going to pray a gentleman prayer. That woman wasn't going to pay any attention to who is looking. She forced her way through. I have good news for you. Jesus is passing by you now. Yeah. And I'm going to ask you to go to him by force and say, this very evening, I must have my complete healing from my head to my toe. My eyes must see clearly. My ears must hear clearly. My brain must be walking the way she will walk. My hands must be strong and ready to clap. My legs must be ready to jump and dance. Um, I, from this moment onward, everything in me is going to begin to praise God. Are you ready for that? Stand on your feet. And just begin to cry to the Almighty God and say, In the mighty name of Jesus, I command you, body, hear the word of the Lord. You were made for His pleasure. Continue to perform the function. My hand become useful, begin to clap for Him. My leg begin to dance for Him. My eyes begin to see. Oh, everything within me begin to praise the Lord. Every sickness in my body, get out. I command you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. My legs, you are to be jumping, you are to be dancing, you are to be bringing glory to God. My hands were not allowed to be, to be withered. My eyes were not to be seen dimly. You are to see clearly. My brain was built by the Almighty God to begin to think properly, to, to learn and to remember. Oh, every part of my body, you are made for the pleasure of the almighty God. And your maker is passing by. I'm going to touch him tonight. I'm going to touch him by faith. I'm going to force my way through to the one who made heaven and earth. Tonight, oh yes, <laughs> I'm going to have my own encounter. I am tired of every ache tired of every pain from this moment on i'm going to be whole my legs will be strong healthy jumping dancing praising god my hands will be healthy doing the will of god i am made for his pleasure i'm not made to, to to sit down by the roadside, weak, tired, spoiled. The one who made me, made me for his pleasure. 
and it's passing by now. It's passing by me right now. And so I have come to grab my healing, to grab my wholeness. This very moment is my own moment. This very moment is my own moment. This very moment is my own moment. Tonight, oh yes, I'm getting my wholeness back. I've tolerated sickness for long enough. No more tonight. No more from tonight onward. My eyes, you are to see clearly. You are to see clearly. Not dimly. My brain, you are supposed to be the brain of a brilliant person. I am made in the image of God. No more headache. No more asthma. No more stomach pain. My stomach, no more fruitless efforts. My liver, praise God. You are made to be praising God. Not to fall sick. My lungs who are made to please God. So I can breathe easily. No more asthma. My body, you are made wonderfully, fearfully. For the glory of God. Anything that is within me that is not of God, you must go out now. You must go out now. God made me for his pleasure. My legs, you must be moving. My hands, you must be doing the will of God. Clapping to him, waving unto him, doing miracles for him. You're not supposed to be withered. My body, you must be clean, free from any form of rashes, any form of ailment. The one who made you, made you wonderfully well. The signature of the Almighty God is upon you, my body. Not the signature of sickness, not the signature of the devil. The devil must take back what belongs to him. God made me to be wonderfully well. And I'm claiming what God made me to be. He made me for his pleasure. And for his pleasure I will be. For his pleasure I will be. In the mighty name of Jesus. I refuse sickness. I refuse ache and pain. I refuse you right now. I must be who God planned for me to be. Healthy, strong, bright, shining for his glory. Rakitu rindre moko shantra manka shanta. Kakura moko kura moko shikikite rinde ke moko shanta. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ramaka kuchi remoko shiki randa ma koko runde kere manka shanta. Kiki ramon shu runde remoko kiki runde kere manka shanta. 
Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. Yes, Lord. From my head to my toes, everything completely whole now. My strength restored. My heart beating normally. My thongs walking the way they should walk. My lungs breathing the way they should breathe. No more headache. No more asthma. No more heart problems. No more kidney failure. Everything come back to normal in the mighty name of Jesus. Become what God plans for you to become. That's my command, buddy. That's my command. Womb, begin to produce children. Not fibroids, children. From made to be fruitful. I command you in the mighty name of Jesus, become fruitful. Become fruitful. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I want you to lay your hands on your heads. I'm going to pray for you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. I command you. In the name of the one who made you. In the name of the God of all flesh. Everything in your body that should not be there, get out. That is abnormal. I command in that name that's above every other name. Everything that's abnormal in your body become normal now. Begin to see. Yeah. Ears begin to hear. Yeah. Tongue begin to speak. Yeah. Wombs become fruitful. Yeah. Kidneys begin to perform your function. Yeah. Legs begin to dance. begin to clap everything within you become normal in Jesus mighty name we have prayed amen now yeah, go ahead you can clap for him that's wonderful Now, I have told you, I've told you why you must be whole tonight. Because of an encounter with your maker. But there are some of us that he wants to have an encounter with us and we don't want to. That's why I'm going to appeal to you now. He said, 
come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If you have not surrendered your life to him, I'm not asking you to surrender to me. I'm not asking you to surrender to any church. I'm asking you to surrender to your maker so that he can have an encounter with you and solve all your problems. If you have not yet surrendered your life to him, please step forward now very, very quickly in whatever locations you might be. Step forward, raising your hand to, to the Almighty God, showing Jesus, I want an encounter with you. I want you to save my soul. I want you to make me a child of God. I'm going to count from one to five. Before I say five, if you want to surrender your life to Jesus, just step forward, move close to the, whatever is used at the altar where you are located. And I will begin to count now. I might not be able to see you, but God can see you. So you begin to come as I count. One. You may be young, you may be old. Today is to be a day of encounter between you and the Lord Jesus Christ. Come to him now. Two. Yes, God bless you. God bless you. He loves you. And he wants you to come to him. He wants to have an encounter with you. So he can save your soul. So that he can perform miracles in your life. So that you can become what he wants you to be. A pleasure to him. Three. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. This is a day you will never forget. A day of a new beginning. Come quickly to him. Four. Okay. Now, wherever you are, in your various locations, if you have decided that you want to surrender your life to Jesus, just bow your head there. And pray a simple prayer. Ask Jesus Christ to be merciful unto you. Ask him to receive you. Ask him to please save your soul. Ask him to forgive all your sins. And promise him that from now on, you'll be serving him. And the rest of you, wherever you are, in your various locations, please stretch your hands to this, your new brothers and sisters, and intercede for them. Pray that the one who saved your own soul will save their own souls also. Let's go ahead and pray for them for about two minutes. Those of you in front of the altar, cry to God, have mercy on me, save my soul. I, I want to be one of your children. That's what you made me to be. Wipe away my sins with your blood. Write my names in the book of life. Receive me into the family of God. Please do so tonight. Do so tonight. Let's pray for them for another 30 seconds. And then I will pray. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father, my God, I want to bless your holy name for these people who have heard your word and have decided that they want to surrender their lives to you. Even as they have come forward now, Father, please receive them. Save their souls. Have mercy on them. Let your blood wash away their sins. Write their names in the book of life. Receive them into the family of God. And from now on, whenever they cry unto you, answer them by fire. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Oh, I praise the Almighty God for all of you, wherever you are stepping forward for salvation now. I want to assure you, by the grace of God, from now on, I will be praying for you. 
So the counselors will come to you, they will take your names, address, and your prayer requests, and they will compile and send to me, and I promise you, I'll be praying for you. Congratulations, God bless you. Now those of you who are before the altar here, follow that man. It will lead you to where some people are waiting for you to collect your names, address, and your prayer requests. Ah, remember your hands are, to, are made to clap. They are made to clap. They are made to clap. Thank you, Father. Now, briefly, uh, two or three things we want to do before we close. And as soon as possible, we'll be closing. We don't want to take more than one hour. Number one, he made us to give him thanks. He wants us to be grateful to him. You know, he could have made us animals, but he made us human beings in his own image. And so we're about to give him thanks now. And we will we'll take our offering and say, Father, we want to thank you with our offering. We want to say thank you for providing for us at all. So let's quickly take our offering. We will thank him with that. And then we will do one or two other things very, very quickly and we'll be on our way. Glory be to God. So the choir will sing and you go to the basket that have been placed before you and drop your thanksgiving offering to him. Over to you, band. Magnify the Lord always Let us bring this
to bless our offering. But after I've done that, we want you to spend five minutes only to praise God. And as we are praising God, everything that we have not been able to do before, physically, you can begin to do them. Even on your way home, keep on checking. Check your stomach. Check your back. Check your hand. Check everywhere. By tomorrow morning, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you'll be singing a new song. And please do me a favor. When you are returning tomorrow, your testimonies can be in writing. So that when you come, we'll put somewhere a basket where you can drop your testimonies. Because I know you will have testimonies. My Father, my God, I want to thank you for what you have already done tonight. You made us for your pleasure. And I know that what you've done tonight is going to bring pleasure to you. You did not make us to fall by the wayside. You didn't make us to be sick. Oh, no, 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 no. Tonight, because you made us in your pleasure, you have come to make an encounter with us so that from this moment onward, ah, doctors will be surprised. <laughs> Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Bless the offering of your children. Sanctify it. Use it for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now just, just think of a song of your own and begin to sing unto the Lord. Sing unto him. Bless his holy name. Dance before him. Clap before him. Just praise him. For the next five minutes, praise him.